In this module, we'll continue our discussion of English language testing in the context of world Englishes. A broadly applied test has little value in the world Englishes context. Any language test has to be based on uh, some uh, set of norms. And why is it important for a test to be based on a set of norms? It is because the uh, evaluators of the test, the uh, test scorers, have to then evaluate the test taker's performance um, against a certain norm. Therefore, it is important for any language test to follow a certain set of norms. What we observe in English language testing today is a clear bias in favor of inner circle variety of English. Um, and this is true of all tests that we have in use in the world today. Um, some major tests include TOEFL, Test of English as a Foreign Language, and IELTS, um, International Eng English Language Testing System, and also TOEIC. Um, so test takers, uh, these, although these um, tests, they are based on the native varieties of English or they follow uh, native English speaker norms um, for uh, the evaluation of the performance of the test takers. It is very interesting to note that the, these test takers have no or little contact with the native varieties of English. So until the point that they take the test, they have had no contact with the native varieties of English. And in case of some of these uh, test takers, there is a possibility that they will never um use english with native speakers um in their lives uh, so um we see that despite uh, th this fact that uh, the test takers have had no um encounter let's say with native english these tests are based on native english speaker norms um a test like toeic uh, test of english for international communication a test which is widely used in some Asian countries, for example, China. This is supposedly a neutral test because it is supposed to test the learner's uh, knowledge of English uh, to be able to use it for international communication. Um, even then, this test uh, shows a, a bias towards native varieties of English, towards standard English. So, uh, even in, in case of this test, the test takers are evaluated uh, on the basis of the closeness of their use of English to the native varieties of English. Now, the adaptation of English is something which is inevitable. It's inevitable because English is being used um, in uh, a large number of countries and these countries are situated far from native English speaking countries. Um, the, the context of use of English in these countries is very different from the context of use of English in native countries. So the adaptation of English, the innovations in the use of English in these countries which are located far from native English speaking countries is inevitable. Um, so one reason is that they, the, the contexts are very different. The other is the unavailability of native speaker models. So even if um, the, the, the countries where English is being used now are far from native English speaking countries, they could still use native English speakers as models. But this is easier said than done and it is not possible for all the countries in the world where English is being taught and learned these days to use native English speakers as models. There are several reasons, several constraints which make it impossible. Um, then there are other uses of English. For example, the use of English in media, literature, education in uh, these countries, in the outer and expanding circle countries. They all reflect local context. The use of English in um, all these uh, areas, in all these domains, in non-native English speaking countries, it reflects uh, the local context, the, the native context and not the English context.
Because of this reason, we see there is a lot of divergence between regional and um, native varieties of English. Um, one area of divergence is the conflation of count and mass nouns, the conflation of countable and uncountable nouns. So, in uh, non-native varieties of English, we have phrases like code switchings, whereas you never, a native speaker would never really use this phrase. Similarly, in the use of English by non-native speakers, uh, we often come across a phrase like threats and intimidations. Um, another area of divergence is um, the collocation of verbs with particles and prepositions. So, um, in the use of English by non-native speakers, we see a frequency of such phrases as fill up a form you might have used it yourself or you might have observed a pakistani pakistani users of english use a phrase like this that i have to fill up a form similarly cope up is a collocation which has become extremely common in many non native english speaking countries including pakistan and its neighboring countries to cope to cope up with the situation is also feature of non native english so we see that there's a lot of divergence between uh, the use of English, between how English is used by non-native speakers and the native speakers. Now what is to be identified is whether a certain kind of use of English is uh, really an innovation or whether it is a mistake, whether it is um, because of the lack of knowledge of the user of English or because it is this change is inevitable and is a result of the native context of use of English. In case of individual uses, it is difficult to classify certain item as an innovation or a mistake because more evidence is needed. So, broad observations, a large number of observations can help us identify the items which are well established in some varieties, the items which are frequently used by a large number of speakers in a certain variety, then indicate that the use of English or this specific use of English or the use of English, a certain item is different from its use in uh, native English. So, whatever the case, what is needed is an awareness on the part of test takers of all these innovations and adaptations in the use of English uh, all around the world and to address these innovations in English language testing.